what makes a great CV? Um, ideally, a great CV should be very short and brief. So mm. what we are looking for is what have you done? So I want to understand what's your educational experience. Mm. I want to understand what is your professional experience. Right. And then I want to know what are your achievements in each place you have worked, mm. and then the duration of the time. Right. Then are there people that we can actually contact who mm. can tell us about your professional experience? Because here we are looking for a job. Mm -hmm. So in your CV, you should be very clear that the referees you give are people who actually can talk about you as an employee. Me as an employee? Yes. Because not I'm me looking. as a, uh, someone that I've worked with before, say perhaps we were in the same company, just an, as an example, but I found you to be very, very productive in your area of study. I may not be your boss, but I could just be your colleague. That's fine because that's, that's fine. professional. Awesome. Yes. Good. So but it doesn't have to be my head of department. Not really. No, it not can be a colleague or a workmate, someone like that. Yes. So what employers do is when you are actually doing the background checks, mm. then you can actually ask for reference yes. from the, past, the supervisor to give you more details. Mm. But as long as somebody should be able to uh, refer you professionally, then that it's important to have that person. And just make sure that the contacts that you have given mm. are contacts that you can, uh, are real contacts that you can reach people on. A lot, times, a lot of times we just do CVs for making them look nice and mm. flowery, but they should actually be what sells you, what makes us shortlist mm. because whatever that is on that CV is what I am looking for mm. on the job description of the advertisement. Right. Carol, what do you look for when you get tons and tons of CVs? Mm -hmm. People who want to come and work for Ringia One Africa Media. Mm -hmm. uh, one Africa Media, yes, I got that one right. Uh, what do you look for in these CVs? Perhaps they want to come in as, say, a consultant. Uh, depending on the job that has been advertised, what would strike you and say, this one, in, this one, not interested. Okay. Um, so first thing key is, does the CV match the job description mm. that we have advertised? So that's really key. Um, sometimes we'll get spammed where, say, for instance, you're looking for, I'll use an example, somebody in HR, mm. and you get a CV for someone applying for that role, and they have a background in accounting. Yeah. So the two don't match up. So key, first level, does it match up to the job description mm -hmm. um, that we are looking for? Yeah. And then the presentation of the CV as well. As uh, Jackie mentioned, I want to see something short and concise that tells me about yourself, mm. um, as opposed to a 10-page um, CV that really doesn't tell me much about um, who you are. Mm. And also very key, especially as you go up the chain, your achievements. What have you achieved in the last roles that you have held? So if I get a CV, matches the JD, very short and concise, yes. highlights great um, experience and achievements, that definitely puts you in the shortlist pile. Does my marital status really matter, Jackie? Yes, marital status does matter. Uh, Why? We actually, um, okay, it depends on the role. It's not that it is a requirement that you need. Mm. However, if uh, you are an employee, then marital status matters. Uh, there was an act that was passed last year, and we actually need to give our marital status to our employers. Why, However, should, why should that matter? Why, why do you need to know all about my business? Now, when you, depending, I say depending on the jobs. Right. There are, it's not, it might not be something that is important for you to have on your CV, mm. but we should be able to ask this as we go on with the interviews. Mm. This is because it depends on the job. Sometimes I am looking like, for example, if you are looking for a nanny, you're an employer. Mm. You actually would want somebody who has children and can take care of your children. Mm -hmm. So it depends. If I am looking, um, it, look, it depends on the position that I'm looking for. Okay. For me to be able to say I want somebody of maturity, somebody who should be able to handle people in different ways, but it is not something that... Stop uh, right there. I'm going to cut you short. Why? How do you say that um, someone of maturity... Look at what happened last week. There was a gentleman from Strathmore School. He's been in the headlines for almost three days. Yes. And he had an issue of uh, battering his wife that led to death. Yes. How do you say that that person was responsible? Now, Marital status. Uh, um, it's not that uh, we are doubting his maturity. It mm. depends on what happens. So there's emotional intelligence and there's also level of IQ. So clearly, we can actually be overtaken by our emotions. So that is a totally different thing. Mm? Yes. Do you agree, Carol? 
whether marital status is important yeah. during an interview. Uh, typically for me, it's not a question I ask um, in the initial interview, mm -hmm. but it comes out. As a person starts telling you a bit about themselves and that kind of thing and their background, you'll, you'll be able to pick up whether or not um, they're married. Mm -hmm. In terms of does marriage make you mature? Um, not necessarily. You'll find that people who are not married and who are very mature and well put together, mm -hmm. and you'll find those who are married and are the exact um, opposite. Yeah. Right. So I don't think marriage per se makes you uh, mature or not. Okay. Yeah. I could be having a bad hair day like I'm having today. <laughs> Obviously going to the barber show, please <laughs> forgive me for that. Tomorrow I'll be uh, looking more sharper than this. Uh, but this is the day that I happen to take that passport picture that the CV requires me to put. First and foremost, am I supposed to put my picture on the CV? No? Um, yes? No. No. Not, no. No. no? no. So even for a modeling job, no? Well, so perhaps for a modeling job, um, mm. because they may want to see, um, uh, you know, how you look like. Yeah. But for any other role, usually if I see a picture or not, for me, it's neither here nor there. So if, if, if I put my picture on the CV and I'm that good looking guy, perhaps, uh, uh, well, I still think I am when I'm carrying cake. <laughs> uh, but I just wanted, so picture, no. It's no, a, no, no, no. What you're looking for in the presentation of a person, you should be able to see when you shortlist them and when they come. Right. Yes. When you shortlist them, when you come. Okay, fine. Now, with the majority of young people having good papers, how come you still have many of them unemployed? It's a national problem. I'd want to say that because mm. uh, we actually have 10,000 graduates every year in Kenya. Yes. So that means they are. 10,000 people hopeful every year to get jobs. Mm. Remember the 10,000 that have graduated last year yes. don't have jobs. Mm. So the job market is really saturated mm. and that is why there are different programs that are coming up to help people either be entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. to develop yourself mm. and also to position yourself for the jobs mm. that you are actually good in. The difference between this is that sometimes we just apply for jobs. So you get applications, I'm looking for any job. Mm. You know, you need to understand what's your niche market. That's what are right. you good at? That's and right. then you develop yourself based on that. Right. You are able to say step by step, I'm good in HR. So these are the skills that I need to develop. And yes. this is because there's reason of, um, a body like IHRM. Mm. This is what they require. So mm. this step by step, this is what I need. Mm. Then you get to the next level. What are the knowledge and skills and competencies? Then now you identify people who you can work with to help you grow. Mm. That way, you're developing yourself for a specific line and you will be good at it. So you stand better than your other competitors. CVs have been about white collar blue tie jobs. The new system of education insists that there won't be a lot of white collar uh, business going on for as, for as long as um, the, the new system of education is concerned. Mm -hmm. Be looking at the more informal sector um, uh, coming out there very quickly because I'm pressed for time. I want to know from you, do I need to write a CV for, 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 for an informal job like becoming a mechanic or, or even um, the very many informal, like, you know, I'm in the food processing uh, in a factory where I'm supposed to uh, bake bread, uh, stuff like that, ETC. Carol? Um, yes, I think you should. Um, I should? I th you should, simply mm. because how will I know what you're bringing to the table? How will I know who you are? Mm. Um, how will I know your background? How will I know your experience? But this is skills-based. It's, it's still important. Um, because if we are hiring, say we have a job, you've just clearly said unemployment is a big issue in, in Kenya, especially yes. youth unemployment. Mm. I have two jobs for bakers and I get 100, 100 people interested in those two jobs. Correct. How do I narrow it down? Mm. A starting point is the CV. I have a CV, I'll look at your, your, your background, I'll see what you have done, then I'm able to really narrow it down so I can be able to fill those two positions. So I mm. think it's very important. Um, something else that you've mentioned, I agree with the new system in terms of focusing more on vocational and technical jobs, yes. leads to more um, entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. which is very key in helping us solve the youth unemployment issue.